Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to finish up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Kevin. Absolutely no context. I don't even know what this band was until I punched the link in today. We're checking out a band called Wake. The track is Venerate, The Undoing of All. I really like this album art. Really warm colors utilized throughout. We just have this one person uh, with a really flowy outfit sitting on a, a rock. And it's just... It's very calming until I see that their hands are up like this and I'm like, oh, why is that happening? <laughs> but I have no idea what this is about. This is one of the cool things about getting requests with no context is, especially for a band like this, they only have 300 subscribers. Looks like it's a smaller band. Uh, where, where are they going to take me? I don't know. Let's find out. This is Wake's Venerate. So we're in a nice uh, compound pulse right here, three. And here we have four. So we have three notes per two beats, which is Himiola right there. Very cool start. Playing around with our perception of time before getting into this really big moment. No pattern right here. It's like it's kind of getting the energy of a blast beat, but without that intensity. Yeah, so many rolls on the snare. I knew it was going in this direction too. Contrast. Just straight single. When we come back to the verse, I'll, I'll show you. Making this our second verse, I guess we don't get to go back to that other idea. Really cool atmosphere.
interesting having that like buzz sawed laser beam pad sitting in the background sometimes. Such a fuzzy sound, golly. That distortion, that rumble is just everywhere. an impressive ending. It's so big. Alrighty then, before we get into any serious discussion, I think I'm improving at this. Let me know. At first I thought this was black metal. The intro is beautiful and we brought in blast beats and 16th note picking and just this gnarly growl. But the song changed after that and I'm going to say this is something in the death subgenre. Particularly maybe Mellow Death, maybe Blackened Mellow Death. How close am I? Am I getting better at this genre thing? <laughs> Let me know. Alright, so let's dig into this. I really enjoyed the opening. I thought it was a great way of making me feel unsettled or... Uh, at least at the at the very least making me feel like I'm not on solid ground. We start off with the triplet idea 
Um, and I counted out the fast three pulse on that. And then when the drums came in, I recognized we were moving towards a four and we had a hemiola going on where we had uh, the triplet was across two beats. So we have a three against two rhythmic pattern as the hemiola. Um, and so we have this really neat idea where it feels like we're in three and then kind of alludes to two and you're like, oh, what are they going to do with this? Because we get that bump bump and then silence. And you're like, oh, where are they going with this? And you get another one of those bump bump. And you're like, okay, is that, what is that? What is that supposed to be? And then the drums come in with their full idea and you realize, oh, they're drumming in four, but the guitars have this triplet idea going on. You got this, uh, this dual time signature thing, this polyrhythmic concept going on. Um, and it's just a really cool way to, at least when the song starts, to kind of, uh, you don't pull the rug out from under me. You just kind of tug at it. And I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, uh, where, where's this flooring going? And then I don't know where I'm at. Am I in three? Am I in four? Um, and it puts me in a, a very questioning mood. And I think that's an important thing for this track. It does a, a handful of things that consistently told me we were doing this and then did this simultaneously. And I think that's very cool. I think the, the inquisitive element is uh, a strong aspect of this track. From here, we went into Blast Beats. And maybe they weren't, yeah, I think they were, but alternating bass and kick though, really fast, 16th notes, uh, the really quick strumming, uh, the growling. We went into our first verse, which I pointed out, I thought was really cool because we had two bars, I think it was, of just pedal tone. Just constantly leaning into this pedal tone. It feels like nothing's really happening. And then we have two bars of this really quick uh, progression. I don't know if it was chordal. Both guitars were playing the same thing, and as far as my ears heard, they were single notes. Uh, I didn't hear a chord, but it's also super fuzzy and just really, really compressed. So I might have lost some detail through that compression, uh, but either way, there's this, there's a progression. It might have just been a note progression, could have been a chordal progression, but we have a, a moving melodic thing. It isn't fast, it's a series of like six or seven notes, but it's this movement. It's like, oh, you know, we're moving somewhere. This is kind of pretty, it's kind of beautiful. It's got It's got some positive elements in the notes themselves, and then we go back to just this really rigid, constant 16th notes on a single note while the drums are just doing this alternating oppressive drum and bass and then it lightens up again the drums kind of shift out to something a bit more groovy and we have this moving idea and it's this it's this rigid weight versus this lightness right and and the, the weightlessness of the moving section would not hit as hard if it weren't constantly pushed up against this really rigid oppressive uh, moment and so it feels like being crushed and then a moment of relief and then being crushed and then a moment of relief but because they're pushed back to back as they are and they are such opposite sides of uh, feeling for me they seem to increase in intensity the crushing by the fourth time felt like it was putting more weight on me than the first and thus the relief of this weightlessness in this moving melody felt uh, it was it was greater than the first time it happened and I don't think there's anything that happened to do that I don't think there was uh, production stuff width volume I don't think any of that musically it was the same every repetition was identical but yet by the fourth time I was like this is a lot <laughs> this is more than where we started so, I, I honestly think it's just the contrast, the dynamic elements that make each section feel more impactful than it was. And after you have one moment of an increase in either direction, you're going to continue to feel that. And I really like this because the lightness paved the way for the chorus, which was fairly melodic in a lot of ways. The guitars and the drums were a bit more oppressive. The, the 
sorry, the vocals in the drums are a bit more impressive. The vocals never let up. We had one section that I couldn't tell if it was a violin-esque instrument or if it was a choir or even just a, a single higher-pitched vocal. Um, it was drowned out in the mix a lot. It was just kind of hearing the note in the background. A lot of the timbre was obscured, but if that was a clean vocal, that's the only one we heard. It was isolated to a single section, and it was so far in the background, I don't even know if it was a vocal. So the vocals never let up. We just have this heavy growl all the time. Sometimes it's centered which brings this directed force, and other times it's split out to the sides, which brings in this compression, this horizontal compression. It just kind of fills out the sound sphere on the sides and makes everything feel closer to you. It is all about this weight, right? And the track is called The Undoing of All. I don't know what venerate means. Let's look it up. Cause that's a good way to learn about things is to educate yourself. Someone presents you with information and you're like, ah, let me uh, try to fit this into the old brain. To regard with reverential respect or with admiring, admiring deference. So, <laughs> just the other day, wasn't it, we were talking about uh, reverence. And this is to have to regard somebody with a reverential respect, respect as if you were in reverence with them or in reverence to them. Interesting. Venerate, it's a verb. A verb like, I will venerate you. Let me see this in a sentence. I'm not sure where this would put, how you would make a sentence. Why doesn't Merriam-Webster have a sentence? Now see, we have venerated. I am venerated. I am regarded with reverential respect. To honor with the ritual act of devotion is a sec. Oh, it's a transitive verb. Okay, I got it now. I don't need a sentence. I mean, it would help, but... Oh, a writer venerated by generations. She is venerated as a saint. Okay. I see how it works. All right, so interesting. This is just venerate by itself, the undoing of all, which is interesting too. But I'd say there's a lot of gravitas to undoing everything. Anything that could undo everything definitely deserves reverence, deserves to be venerated. To have the mouth agape in awe. What was I talking about? Beautiful lines. Oh, the vocals. The vocals being impressive. Yeah. There's definitely an awe to the weight that the vocals bring, especially when paired with the drums, which it frequently is. All right. Uh, where to next? Where to next? I thought it was really cool they had a variation. Our second verse was nothing like our first verse. Um, it was more melodic, but it also kind of lacked the weight. And then we went back to the chorus. So we had a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, but it was like A, B, C, B, which is cool. So then we have a series of events, and I'm not sure what happened here. Um, I don't think we came back to a chorus after this. If we did, I didn't pick up on it. So I'm kind of seeing this as A, B, C, B, D, E, F, G. Song's over. <laughs> There's a series of events here after we have our, our two choruses that um, I want to look at primarily because this is where things started to click for me in what I perceive my genre guess to be. There is a lot of weight that goes on in here, but there's also a lot of levity. And the levity comes in the form, much like in our opening verse, of melody. 
the drums have more melodic and groovy elements that we get out of them. It is not the constant rigidity that we hear in the opening section, the alternating bass and kicks. Uh, we do return to that, but a lot of these sections have a drum pattern that, while not heavily syncopated, isn't just rigid 16th notes. There are spaces, there are rests, there are moments to breathe in the rhythmic structure itself. The guitars and bass move towards more melodic con sorry, melodic concepts where they're not too focused on individual notes or rhythms, but how they can craft a sound sphere. We, or sorry, uh, we're going to go sound sphere. The atmosphere of it all. Um, and it's really impressive. They, they kind of leaned into this at the beginning and didn't touch back on it. It was like a little bit of foreshadowing before we head into the latter half of the, the track. Where... The notes they choose are melodic, and the order they play them in, and the weight that they have on each of the instrument or each of the notes, how long they are, does change over time. It creates something melodic, but it's not a really strong melody. There's not anything in here that I think is hum worthy, where you would just go along humming these guitar riffs out loud, or anything that would get stuck in your head. They're not hooks. They're not catchy. They are melodic, but they're not melodies, if that makes sense. But what they are, are, is atmospheric. You see, it's not just the note itself, but the timbre playing it. These guitars are crunchy, fuzzy, noisy. When we have that guitar solo come in on the center channel, we have the side guitars, we have the center bass and drums, and they're kind of making this foundation, and it's pretty full. And then the solo guitar plays its first note, and you realize we're only taking up about 70% of the sound sphere, and you hear just how big this new guitar sound is. It starts in the middle, reverberates out to the sides, and just fills all this space. It is a massive sound. The soloist doesn't need to play too many notes to fill in the space that the vocals used to. And it is just... It's such a big tone. And once again, I don't know if it was chords or individual notes. A lot of the production that goes into crafting this sound also sort of override the nuance of it. It uh, destroys... Uh, some semblance of the timbre, which interestingly creates a new timbre for it. The guitar sound of the string itself vibrating is sort of being lost, but we're getting a new identity of the sound through all the destruction. And so we have, once again, the semblance of melody. It is a moving line. We can hear the notes changing in pitches. But it's not something that is catchy. What it does do is paint a very particular picture, though, of something very massive entering the picture. A lot of space has been carved out for it, and it has taken more. This concept that I think is highlighted here and utilized elsewhere is one of the big aspects to this track. Anytime the guitars are being melodic, it's to create an atmosphere. It's to have this fuzzy buzzsaw sound everywhere. And to kind of paint it as a picture of something destructive being wielded in creativity. Stuff is being crafted out of this massive sound. It, it fills so much of the, the art here. And I don't know what in particular to make of it. I don't have anything profound to direct this mindset to. Maybe when we hit the lyrics, I can make some things click and come away with a, a larger idea here. But I, I don't think it was an accident that so many times when the guitars moved towards something melodic, it was more about filling space with their sound and having movement to it, then creating a melody, despite being melodic. And it, it crafts so much of the guitar's use throughout this track. 
Now, to wrap up this song, we head into the outro, which is just bone crushing. We bring back the fast drumming, the bl- the blast beats. I was going to call them brass beats. I don't know what that is, but that sounds pretty cool. I got to make that up. What is a brass beat? It's like a trumpet and drum thing. I don't know. I should make it up. We bring back the blast beats. We bring back tons of notes in the guitar. Sometimes they're stationary. Sometimes they're moving. The vocals are pushed from the center channel to the outside and is compressing the sound in. It feels like it is crushing it. You have 10% of space on the inside, on the outsides, and you've wedged something that should take up 20% of space in there. And, you, and it's, it doesn't fit. You are literally wedging it into the outsides, and it's putting pressure on everything in the center. And it is just constant. The guitars have decided to push themselves up in pitch, and we are at a higher range than we have been throughout the rest of the track, which also kind of, to me, feels like this weight that's been moved into the upper range that's now pushing down on on me from the top as well, which is not something we've really had before. I kind of spoke about that feeling in the opening verse of having this pressure put down on me, but it was pedal tones. That weight was coming from the low end. This is literally a weight above me pushing down. We have the vocals to the side of me pushing in. The compression, the tension of this section is exceptionally palpable. And then it just ends. I'm not sure what to make of that yet. What this song does very well, though, from my little experience with it, is a masterful control over tension. When to apply it, when to release it, how to apply it. From which direction should tension be applied? Should a type of compression come from it? Should the listener feel like they are being stretched or squashed? And they find so many ways of manipulating at least my feeling, my headspace, while checking this track out. That I absolutely feel like I'm in the presence of something large enough to undo everything. There isn't a single instrument in on this track that doesn't feel larger than life, either most of the time or all of the time. The vocals definitely land in the all of the time. They are just massive. And so, if the song makes me feel small, makes me feel in the presence of something that deserves to be venerated. What is that thing? And I don't know. (laughs) Uh, It took me a second to find the lyrics, but uh, props to Metal Archives for having them. I, I honestly don't know what this is. There is something very large coming to undo everything but here's the cool thing is that we have this the sentence in the opening line venerate the undoing of all i don't think it is specifically an entity that we need to have reverence for but the sheer concept of the undoing of everything calls it a kaleidoscopic cluster of chaos It's an aberration that swiftly unfolds and is omnipresent. It is something that will undo everything, something that the event of this should be venerated. There's a lot of elements in here, though, where on a surface level read, a a real quick glance through, which is how I typically do this, kind of go over my head. But there are some really cool lines in here. Now, interestingly, there is an I, and it takes a long time to get there. But it says, with an emphatic impermanence, 
I will drag myself beyond the seventh layer, past the edge of transparency, and fade. This is repeated, but instead of I fade, it says past the edge of transparency, beyond the infinite, beyond the further. So, impermanence is lacking permanence, something that isn't around forever. And he says, I will wait with an, it's not saying I'm impermanent. He says, I have an impermanence. With an emphatic impermanence, I will drag myself. It's used as a description. Um, anyways, that through all of this chaos around me, I will fade away. I will go past transparency. I will go beyond infinite. I will go towards the endless reaches. And you'll never see me again. Weaving unconscious delusions within a within a deceptive perception, unrepentant and now unrestrained, a cosmic defenestration. Which I love that line. Uh, defenestrate is just a very cool word. Its definition is to yeet something out a window. <laughs> to chuck something out a window. To, to force something to exit a room through a window. I think the window is an important aspect of it. It is to defenestrate. And he calls this... It is possible that this entity is what is bringing this chaos. And through seeing this chaos, they have decided that instead of undoing everything, I will simply leave. I will get to the farthest reaches where no one can find me. And he calls this the cosmic defenestration. Which is just such a cool concept. There's no windows in space though, bro. Um, and then we end the track just says, Venerate the undoing, venerate it all. Which is just like, put everything into perspective. Feel feelings of awe about everything. The chaos that grows and creates and the chaos that destroys. Venerate it all. I don't know if that's necessarily what they're going for, but those are some very larger-than-life ideas that fit well with the concepts in the music about this larger-than-life crushing power that there's also beauty to, which I completely forgot to touch on. The atmospheres that the guitars make, I even mentioned at the beginning, there's, they're gorgeous. There's some really beautiful elements going on underneath this crushing weight Right, and it creates this this schism, this uh, not a schism, a, a paradox, where it is disgustingly beautiful. Something to both fear and be in awe of, and I wonder if that's what this is all about, because the music reflects that very well. It's it's a being or concept maybe even calls it a cluster of chaos and it might not be a physical being but just a, more of a metaphorical representation of chaos itself it can both build and destroy and you should have reverence for chaos and everything it can do be in awe of the world around you it was born from chaos but also don't forget about the power that chaos can have it breaking things down. Those are just my thoughts, though, on Wake's Venerate the Undoing of All. What did you think? Was there anything in here that stood out to you? Anything that you really enjoyed that maybe I didn't touch on or something that I talked about? You disagree with me? Maybe you have a different perspective on things? Let me know. Put that stuff down in the comments. Above the comment section is a description box, and now you'll find a link to Linktree. Takes you here. This big old green menu has <laughs> got links to uh, the Discord server, ways to support the channel. It's got a link to my music and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three. All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to check out another track that features uh, has a strong bass feature to it to go along with Base Week and another special selection. Until next time, remember to be critical, 
not cynical of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.